The universe is full of amazing contrasts. Most of space expanses are cold, lifeless vacuum. Paradoxically, it harbors clumps of surprisingly hot material, which we call stars, drifting deliberately through its limitless stretches. For billions of years, they illumine the fathomless depths of space and undergo slow and mostly subtle changes as time goes by. However, sometimes space is illuminated with an incredibly big flash. A giant star suddenly shrinks to a thousandth of its original size, only to destroy everything around it in a violent explosion moments later. The shockwave, with a power beyond our imagination, rips the star apart, and with its volume blown away and gone, the only things that remain around are clumps of scorching hot gas, and where the star has just been, there remains just a tiny object made up of exceptionally dense material with bizarre and extraordinary properties. This is how stars die, violently and in the blink of an eye. The end of 2019. Astronomical observatories report a sudden decrease in the luminosity of the star known as Betelgeuse. Observations show that its luminosity dropped to 36% of the standard value within a matter of a couple of months. Some scientists are talking about an upcoming supernova, which will be the brightest object in the night sky. Disturbingly, the gamma ray flow emitted by the explosion is thought to be potentially dangerous for life on our planet. April 2020. Astronomers assure the general public that Betelgeuse has recovered its luminosity to the standard value. It may still go supernova at any moment, but there is no way to predict this event with any degree of certainty. Assumptions about reasons for such anomalous fading are put forward. According to the most popular hypothesis, it was caused by a giant cloud of gas and dust ejected by Betelgeuse in the direction of the Sun very recently. June 2021. The assumption is confirmed by data from Earth-based telescopes. Astronomers keep observing the object, while astrophysicists model out the processes occurring in its interior. Before we attempt to get to the bottom of what was taking place, it's a good idea to be aware of what Betelgeuse is like. This object falls into the category of red supergiants and is in the final stage of its life cycle, according to today's theory of stellar evolution. With its luminosity and radius constantly changing, its outer layers are highly unstable. The star regularly emits millions of tons of scorching gas into space, and this forms gargantuan prominences. As they cool off, they contribute to the gas nebula surrounding Betelgeuse. The star's mass is around 17 times that of the Sun, and its diameter has by now been gauged only roughly at 700 to 880 times that of the Sun. Hypothetically, if Betelgeuse were to be placed in the center of our system, it would swallow up all the planets as far as Mars, as well as most of the asteroid belt. It should be mentioned that the star has no clearly defined edge, because its outer layers are extremely rarefied. Besides, the object is shrouded in a gargantuan gas nebula made up of cooled-off prominences or protuberances and particles of stellar wind. At the same time, the density of stellar matter on the conventional edges of the star is only slightly higher than that of the nebula. Betelgeuse is a remarkably bright star. Its minimal luminosity is 90,000 times higher than that of the Sun, while its maximal luminosity is a staggering 150,000 times higher. Interestingly, the star's temperature is not that great, considering it ranges from 3400 to 3800 Kelvin, which corresponds to the red spectral band. There are barely predictable processes running in the unstable outer layers of the star. They are capable of elaborately changing the object's luminosity. The main pulsation period of the star is approximately 420 days, but less distinct cycles of longer and smaller periods can be singled out too. Besides, unpredictable flares and dimming of the star can be observed from time to time. Because this star is so unstable, it is extremely difficult to calculate the distance between us. According to the estimates offered by the Coriolis satellite in 2020, 
The distance between the Sun and Betelgeuse is anything from 500 to 650 light years. According to today's notions of stellar evolution, Betelgeuse would have formed around 8.5 million years ago and its original mass wouldn't have been over 20 solar masses. Its life cycle would have started in a giant cloud of interstellar gas that would have been gradually compressed and heated up by gravity forces. That is how the protostar, the progenitor of Betelgeuse, was born. At a certain point, the temperature and pressure in its interior reached high enough values to unleash a chain reaction of hydrogen transforming into helium. Moments later, the thermonuclear interaction consumed the entire astronomical body and a new star flared up in the night sky. This is how the longest period in the life of any star begins, the main sequence stage. Throughout this time, merging of hydrogen atoms nuclei that produce helium is the main energy source for them. Admittedly, the heavier a star, the faster this process runs. Life expectancy of massive stars like Betelgeuse is a measly several million years, whereas red dwarfs remain active for billions of years. Either way, over 90% of a star's life passes in the main sequence stage. Gradually accumulating, helium is drawn to the object's center to form a helium core. What happens to this star next depends almost entirely on its mass. For example, Stars with masses not over 20% that of the Sun do not go supernova at the end of their existence. Unlike more massive stars, having eventually run out of almost all of their hydrogen, they slowly turn into blue dwarfs, hot and comparatively small astronomical objects. However, the minimal time it takes to complete this transformation is around a trillion years, which is 72 times the assumed age of the universe which is why it is doubtful that any blue dwarf will be discovered today. After hydrogen supplies are depleted, thermonuclear reactions in the star will stop and it will become a white dwarf made up of 99% of helium. Ahead are trillions of years of slow fading and cooling until a tepid black dwarf is left instead, which is barely visible through telescopes. If an object's mass lies in the range from 0.2 to 8 solar masses, its evolution goes through more elaborate processes. Helium, which is produced as a result of thermonuclear reactions, adds to the star's core while gravity forces compress it and heat it up more and more. At a certain point, there occurs a reaction of helium nuclei merging, which produces carbon. The star begins to expand, its radius grows as well, and the temperature of the outer layers drops. In this case, the object turns into a red giant or subgiant. Comparatively light stars with masses not exceeding 50% that of the Sun cannot sustain conditions necessary for the chain reaction of helium and carbon. Transformations like these are quite irregular in such objects. As for heavier objects, reactions occurring in the star's core may run longer and produce not only carbon and oxygen, but also heavier elements, like nickel and dian. Eventually, the star sheds its outer layers and what is left is a white dwarf enveloped in a planetary nebula. If the initial mass of the original star wasn't more than half that of the Sun, it will mostly be made up of helium with just a small ratio of heavier elements in its composition. If, on the other hand, the star was heavier than that, the white dwarf would be mostly made up of oxygen and carbon. However, with the original star having been heavy enough, it will include neon, magnesium and even iron. Evolution of massive objects has its laws. The heavier a star, the more massive its core. With the mass of a star eight or more times that of the Sun, its core might get over the so-called Chandrasekhar limit, which is 1.4 times the mass of the Sun. In this case, forces of internal electromagnetic repulsion are not strong enough to compensate for gravitational compression. It takes a few seconds for the core to shrink pulling the outer layers in its wake. The exceptionally powerful compression heats up the core to temperatures of hundreds of millions Kelvin and literally crams electrons into atoms' nuclei. This turns part of the electrons into neutrons and produces great amounts of neutrinos. Even a dense material like that is not able to hold back the most elusive particle in the universe. 
In a few seconds' time, neutrinos break away from the collapsing star and escape, taking some thermal energy with them. As a result, the star experiences extremely powerful internal pressure, as the closely packed protons repel each other with a great force. That is why the core goes on to expand as rapidly as it shrank a few seconds previously, and this produces a tremendous shockwave in the material surrounding it. As a result, a tremendously powerful explosion occurs, which is capable of hurling the star's outer layers enormous distances away. Its flames can unleash reactions that are impossible anywhere else. That is how heavy elements are produced, like gold, lead or uranium. The nebula formed as a byproduct gradually cools off and disperses to form separate clouds which are later compressed by gravity forces and transform into new stars and planets. Where the star has been, there remains a tiny but extremely heavy object referred to as a neutron star. If the original star's mass was over 18 to 20 times that of the Sun, on explosion its core is supposed to shrink to form a black hole, a bizarre object that distorts time and space around it. Mathematical modeling shows that particularly large stars with masses over 100 times the mass of the Sun may hypothetically be destroyed by the blast completely. In this case, all the material they are made up of will be scattered by the shockwave many light years around or else be transformed into extremely powerful electromagnetic radiation. An electromagnetic impulse from a supernova is capable of covering hundreds of light years. At first, the radiation is characterized by incredible force annihilating all living things on its way. However, with the covered distance growing, the density of the flow decreases and the lethal rays gradually disperse in space. Estimates show that a star similar to Betelgeuse may be a threat to anything within the radius of up to a hundred light years. It is absolutely impossible to tell when this star will go supernova, but it is likely to do so in the nearest hundred thousand years. According to some estimates, Betelgeuse may flare up as brightly as the full moon. The dying star will remain the dominating object in our night sky for a while and then will gradually fade. The object will not be visible to the naked eye anymore and only the most powerful telescopes will be able to distinguish the radiation emitted by the tiny neutron star. If the mass of Betelgeuse is actually bigger than is assumed now, it may leave a black hole after going supernova. In this scenario, the energy flare will be by far smaller and the sight much less impressive. Either way, there is no threat to the Earth. Betelgeuse lies too far away from the solar system, and a gamma ray flare that will accompany the supernova will not cause us any harm. The material ejected by the explosion will reach the environs of our system only in six million years. Its speed is estimated to be around 13 kilometers per second and will be thwarted by solar wind before getting as far as the inner areas of the system. With all today's successes in science, the dark depths of limitless space still harbor myriads of mysteries and hazards. That is why people keep studying the sky as diligently as thousands of years ago in search of answers to their questions. And the gloomy, boundless abyss of interstellar space is as scary as it is appealing. Who knows? Maybe, at some point, it will provide an answer to a really major question.